Hi, I'm Amy Rosen, food editor at Chatelaine Magazine, and I'm here with Lucinda Scalaquin and her fabulous new cookbook, Mad Hungry Cravings. Perfect title. Yes, because we all crave something. Do we ever? And this book is just full of foods you want to eat. Yeah. We often go out to get them, but you're saying stop it. Stop it. Get back in your kitchens. You can cook what you crave. But mostly I tell you how to do that by outlining four different pantries that tell you if you love Latin food or Mexican food, here's what you should have in your pantry. Same with Asian food, Mediterranean food, or so you know, great. good old regular food. But I think today we're set up for one we of my love, favorites. We love Mexican. Who doesn't? Have you ever met anyone who does I'm not? Not really, actually. My dad thought he didn't, but then I convinced him otherwise. There you go. Yeah. So convince us. Okay, so, well, when you, if you are gonna drive through, like you're going for fast food Mexican, you're going through one of those, you know, takeouts, you're gonna get like a deep fried flauta or something like that. So I say make that your own. And at home one day I made this because there was nothing in the house to eat, so I scavenged. And one of the kids asked me if I ordered Mexican food. So I was like, that's ah, a keeper. That's it. So how we do this is um, start with a basic technique, which is heating. We, we, we put these beautiful corn tortillas. Did mm -hmm. somebody make these here? Maybe, maybe not. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. So again, you have to picture that like I'm in a hurry and uh, you know people are eating, need to eat, and I've got like five hungry mouths. So I'm running around. I'm like, okay, I've got a few tortillas here. Um, we'll just make four right now. Okay. And then I had some cheese, not a lot. You're not like you know beautiful amount of cheese you have here. Any cheese is fine. I like a nice melting cheese like Monterey Jack. So this is Monterey. This Jack. is Monterey Jack. Okay. Canadians that's love their cheddar, and that would be fine. That right? would be use what you've got. My recipes are all about use what you have, okay. and if you love something then go for it. And also, by the way, if it's all you have in your fridge, go for it. There's no need to go out and buy extra cheese. Okay, so we're sticking these in the oven just for about a minute, just to get this cheese melted, which is an important point, not just for flavor, but it's the glue it's that's gonna glue. help us, right? So we get and these in a... Into we should have said that we are preheated our oven before we started, and yes. then we're ready to go, yes, right? Yes, there you go. So it's 425. 425, I'll stick this one in here. Stick that in there. All right. All right. So while that's melting and we're paying attention to the fact that that's in there, again, this was all about what I had. So I have some black beans mm -hmm. and just throw, put them in here and some, some tomato. And then you just take um, a lime. And, ag and again, this recipe came about just because this is what I had, right? So what are some tricks? You know how sometimes I have the driest limes. Yeah. Well, what you should do, no matter what, and I didn't do, is you should Take your lime and roll it like this. You and did it, just do that instinctively. Did I before. instinctively? You did. Okay. I, I witnessed it. So then that loosens up whatever okay. juice you have there, and then you just squeeze it in here and mix it up. And, and these are of, canned beans that canned are canned beans. Yeah. So this is stuff that's in your Mexican pantry. It's in your pantry and your everyday pantry. Exactly. To be with and you. then the other thing is, I'm a big fan of beans. Okay. So one bag of dried beans make like six times the amount right. of your can for half the price. So that's another tip if you're trying to be frugal and the flavor is delicious. But if you're in a hurry, this is one place that I really am a fa I'm in, I'm in, I'm in favor of this. Okay. So we've got this going here and we've mixed this up. Now, if you had extra chicken or you didn't like black beans, you want to use red beans, you don't want to use beans at all, you're making a filling based okay. on what you have. So this recipe was built around what I at the time had in the house. And what I do is sometimes Taste the it. beans exactly. are a little bit saltier, so these are salty, these beans, so I'm glad I didn't put too much okay. um, salt in. A little bit of lime just picks up that right. acidity, of course, as you know, with the tomatoes and the lime. I think a lot of the reasons why we crave things is because of the acid level, mm. and that means lime, lemon, vinegar, and so I'm a big proponent in helping people understand. Instead of all the salt, it's really exactly. acid. Okay, that's, that's interesting. what I think is, is that tang cannot be underestimated mm. for craveability. It gets it going, That's right. right. In, in fact, just tasting that, my mouth is watering. Now, I think what we should do is go back here again because I think this might be You're ready. right. Yeah, this is good. Okay. I'll take them out. You want to move on to the... Are we making the best avocado ever? Uh, well, we're going to make Walk. guacamole the way I love to make it, which is simply... The only thing is, Amy, we need to oh, we roll have to these top babies. We, we have to roll right. them. Rock and roll them right this now. This is a safe surface. Don't do that. Yep. Anymore. Okay. I'm gonna just move this aside so that you have room. Okay. And like I said, what we're trying to emulate here is just 
um, a fr basically a deep fried thing. So what we're doing is filling You have here. lots of great fake out deep I fried. I do. Can you so tell one, us a couple? Well, They're one of the fascinating. things I do a lot of the time is I, um, I mean the reason we have parchment here is because a lot of people don't have the nonstick pans like you, you mm -hmm. do here. But is to preheat your oven, let's say if you were making like oven fries, yeah. you preheat your pan in your oven. So when those fries hit that pan with a little bit of oil, you actually hear the sizzle. sizzle. Exactly. Okay, so here what we're doing is just rolling these over. Okay. And these are such beautiful uh, tortillas that we don't have to worry. Sometimes it's hard to manage them. Do they crack? They crack, but you know what? Don't worry, just press down because you've got your cheese there, right? Okay. And your cheese is like glue. And then in order to fake out the fry, we're putting a little bit of oil on here, just on the top. So this is vegetable oil. Does it matter what doesn't, kind of oil? It okay. doesn't. If you like canola, um, I, I tend to always use safflower oil myself as my neutral oil. But if you have olive oil, that's fine too. Why do you use safflower? I like it because it has a high uh, smoking point. It doesn't smoke, you know, it, it takes a lot of tolerance and it has no flavor and it's a little bit healthy. So I add okay. all those three things together, that's Look just that. Me. So we're putting this in here until they're crispy and golden. Okay. And nothing could really happen faster than that. Except for guacamole, I think. Well, while this is actually getting nice and crispy, we're gonna make the guac. Because how I like to serve this at home is I like to take those crispy flautas and dip them in the guacamole. Oh, right. that sounds good. So my that guacamole, sounds like takeout food. Exactly. Dipability, craveability. Exactly. Oh, you're so now, um, I learned how to make guacamole from a real purist Mexican cook. So I don't put a lot of extra extraneous things in here. We have basically white onion, that's a big tip for Mexican food, yeah. other than Spanish or uh, uh, onion, it has a nice bite to it. This beautiful serrano chili. I love this. Which is spicier than a jalapeno, so it's sort of your preference as to whether Sometimes or not. Sometimes you bite into a jalapeno, you're and like, this no, is a green pepper. Exactly. Don't waste my so time with this. So here's another tip yeah. for you. When I when I'm have a jalapeno that's called for in a recipe, I always buy two or three, and before I go anywhere, I cut it and I taste it. Is it burning my tongue off, or is it completely, as you say, like a green pepper? Mm -hmm. And sometimes just from pepper to pepper, they vary. So do you, t um, we have a tip that you cut it at the stem, yeah, and then you touch it to your, that's the only way to test the spiciness of a pepper, is to taste it. You have to taste it. You There's do, no right? Okay, so we're not missing And then, it. of course, beautiful cilantro that, like, takes everything, mm -hmm. I think. Very few people don't like cilantro, but, the um, ones who don't really don't. And you know though. who one of them was? Julia uh -huh. Child. Famously, ah, that's one of the only okay. things she didn't like was cilantro. Speaking of famous chefs, yes, Diana Kennedy. Yes, well, she, I worked with Diana for many years, okay. and um, this is actually one of the inspirations for my um, for, for my uh, guacamole. And if I'm really going to go deep into regional Mexican cooking, that's the book I turn to. Well, yeah. the book. She's got several. She, yeah. So we have now in traditional Mexican food, you would you would grind this together in a molcajete and make a paste. But that's not really realistic a lot of the time. So yeah. I get it chopped very fine. And um, white onion is important here. And then... Because of the sweetness? Well, no. Not it's, as sharp? It's, it's actually quite sharp. It's not as sweet as like a Spanish onion, the white But onion. I mean, as opposed to, a, you wouldn't use a cooking onion because um, it's like. Well, I will say that if that's what's in my pantry, you're going to use it. Okay. But you guys followed the recipe, so what am I going to do here? So we have beautiful chopped, and I, you notice there's not many seeds in here, mm -hmm. and I'm not afraid of the spice, are you? No. Okay, so we're going to go for it. If Bring you it on. are, if if I, anybody, I want to sweat. If anybody's afraid of spice, when you get, let me just show quickly, once you get in this pepper here, um, it's most of the heat is right there in the stem and the seeds, so just remove that. Oh, so we have idea. the onion, we have our um, serrano chili. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put in not all, but some of our uh, cilantro, okay. and a little bit of salt to get it going. And then you know what I'm gonna have you do? Well, I and the going. coarse salt is important. Coarse right? salt and start kind of. We're not. We don't need to. We just need to mix. But then I like to press it down a little, like I'm halfway towards okay. going to the molcajete. Get the juices going. Get it a going. Bit. And then here's the avocado. Now these are beautiful. They're, um, you know, they're a little bit resistant, not too much. You can see the dip. That you know, I always buy these advanced because it's rare. Give us your tips, everyone. You know, they're all rock hard. They're all rock hard. You do hard. have to plan ahead. Don't be like I'm going to make guacamole and run out to the store and expect it's to get It's not there. happening. It would be complete kismet if that happened. Why can't we can land a man on the moon, exactly. but we can't sell ripe avocados? Um, although you could put avocados with some. Uh, you could get it home and put it in a pla in a paper bag with um, an apple or something like that. And That's what we did. It will hasten right? the ripening. Okay. So uh, you've got a big pit in here, right? So we're just going around now. 
and then you just turn it. If we were going to want to do something, let's say like we wanted cubed avocado, I would just cube it right in here and lift it out. But since we're just gonna mash it in there, I'm gonna give it to you and just scoop it scoop out. It. Yep. And then I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but just to get this pit out, you just slam and turn and there you have the pit is right out of the it. avocado. And another little tip is, and I don't know if this is a wives tale or not, but you put the pit in your guacamole and it prevents it from turning brown. And I believe it and I do it and my guacamole doesn't turn brown, but that could also be because um, it's Have you ever tried so fast. not doing it? No, well, I haven't. You I need a controlled study on this, <laughs> Exactly, I because you know what? I'm not a big fan of lime in my ah, guacamole. Okay. And I also don't love garlic in my guacamole. But one reason, um, one other thing is that I like to fold in tomatoes at the end and that's got some acidity to it too, which will help prevent the browning. Okay. So we're getting these out. I'm gonna just hand you this like a Give them over. assembly line. And oh, these are perfectly right. One other thing I, I have learned um, studying and traveling with regional Mexican food is that frequently uh, there's all kinds of mix-ins that aren't just sort of newfangled ways to make guacamole. So in one region, we got to this far and it was all mashed down, but then pomegranate seeds are folded in at the end. And one other tip is that I, you know, talk about cook what you crave and don't order out or buy it at the store. Mm -hmm. I don't know who decided that guacamole should be in certain stores they have them in a bag uh, and it's like paste. What are they putting in I that? don't know there's, what they're doing. There's a flavor in there that tastes like poison to me. Well, it's I think it's like citric acid basically, it has which to isn't be. in and of itself so bad. Yeah. So you can see here I'm just mashing. I love my guacamole with big chunks. Super chunk, right? Yeah. But you need to get enough of that paste in there to make sure that you've got some, you know, flavor throughout. Now, you have a spoon, you can taste and see how our salt's doing, because that's okay. kind of important here. Okay. Um, I suppose if you use this, and we don't go, just get a, and if we, see if we need a little bit of salt. Okay. And I, that's another tip, it's just the most basic tip in the world, but of course, I taste it every turn when I'm cooking. What it's not just for chefs, it's for home cooks it's to taste too. It's for home cooks too, because. I'm gonna put a little more salt, Okay. not and too much. So. Now we have our tomatoes here. So a lot of people do not put tomatoes in it. I just love it. I, I, I don't it always do it. It does brighten it up, and as you say, the acidity, and I don't, texture. I don't do much except for just fold it in, and that's a key. I saw somebody the other day <laughs> at my own house making this recipe <laughs> and like mashing it, mashing it. It's like, no, we don't want to get rid of the uh, you know beautiful texture of the guacamole. We just want to brighten it up a little. It looks so gorgeous. I'm good right there. And I, I'm gonna get these because okay. we'd hate them to burn in the final second. No, that's true. I'm gonna taste myself. Mm. So the rest of this, I just put on top, just to have a little garnish. Okay. And I'm gonna do a little cleanup while you pull those off because that's another tip to cleaning up. Clean as you go. Clean as you go. Do you notice a difference between men and women, mostly how they cook? Amy, you're looking to someone who wrote a book called Mad Hungry Feeding Men and Boys. I... And the reason why was because um, I did notice a difference. Yeah. And I took some heat for it's it. It's infuriating, isn't but, it? But um, as I say, few women at my table want thirds. Most of them are happy with a mediocre salad. Guys are not. Ah. Uh, I have to teach Dishwasher 101 every month on the regular. <laughs> Most of my female friends know how to fill a dishwasher and their daughters do too. So. Well, it's complicated stuff, you know. Anyway, so um, we could, if we wanted to put this, you know, you could just kind of, actually, you know what, let's do that. Why not? Let's consider this our, um, Ah, okay. I don't know. Once we're dipping on the side, yeah, right? That's the way the to side. go. Why cool everything down and make it soggy when we don't need to, right? There you go. So here we Beautiful. are. Beautiful. That looks nice, right? So let's see if um, these are. So they're sometimes, crisp. if they're not crispy enough, you can just you know you never know with tortillas. First of all, when you buy packaged corn tortillas, they're treated. They're with all so different. Yeah. You never know, and homemade ones are amazing, obviously. But if you let these sit for a little bit, they'll crisp right up. But um, Maybe what we should do is eat is, them. Yeah, let's let's cut in half. You know, I'm craving this, so awesome. I think you've done your job. Here's one piece for you. Thanks. They're a little warm. I know. I'm, I'm a bit nervous right now, but you I'm know not, what? I, I want to eat it so badly. So I'm just going like that. Okay, I'll let you it's eat it little, first. It's a little hot, so the dipping in part might not work, but just a, a little, little bit bite. bite. I know. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Delicious. Mm. Okay, I'm not scared anymore. Don't be scared. 
Lucinda, no. thank you so much for coming to our kitchen and making this beautiful dish with us. Cheers. Cheers to you. Mmm. Mmm.